What's up guys, welcome to Supercars of London. As you can see, I am down in Salkham, which is the southwest of England and on a family holiday over the Easter break. You may also have seen from social media that unfortunately my Audi A1 was involved in a little accident from Storm Katie, which was a storm that hit the UK and unfortunately a rotten tree crashed down onto my car, but actually worse, the car behind, which is a VW Polo, which you will see. So the first bit of this video is just the first time that I saw my car under a tree or sort of with a tree. Um, and then we go on to the six month review of the Nuke, which I filmed 24 hours previously to the tree landing on the car. So enjoy this video guys. And there's gonna be a Q and A coming up about daily drivers as my next video. So enjoy. No, that's not. Is that right? Anyway, what's up guys? Welcome to Supercars of London and a video I'm not expecting to film because I'm filming on my iPhone whilst I walk up about 160 steps. Now yesterday, I went out and filmed with my Audi A1, the Nuke. We filmed a pretty cool video talking about what it's like to live with and I started on these stairs up here because we're down in a hotel that doesn't have very good parking. So I've had to park my car all the way at the top of the hill. Five minutes ago, I got tagged in a tweet from a TV news reporter saying this car isn't going anywhere. Storm Katie has struck again, something like that. Holy crap. Holy crap. Oh man, no! So this is the extent um, to the damage. Poor VW Polo and also poor Audi A1. We've got a shattered rear window. We are so, oh my God, look at the tree. Holy shit, I can swear. That is what has come down. Oh my god. So this is the scene. Oh man, I'm going to have to get that fixed. New spoiler. Don't particularly know what these electrics are. And I've got a dent there. But apart from that, it's going to be... That's going to have to come out. Um... <laughs> What's up guys, welcome to Supercars of London in Salkham, which is the south of England. We are right on the coast. And if you follow me on Snapchat, Twitter, and Instagram, you'd have seen some updates that I am down here with my family. This is a week's Easter holiday before all hell breaks loose when I arrive back into London, pick up my new car, which I've been working on behind the scenes, and then me, Sam, Seb, James, and Tim are going on an epic European drive. So today's video is going to be all about my 2015 Audi A1, nicknamed the Nuke, because of NUK at the end of the registration plate, and the fact that I took it to Dub Customs less than six hours old and stealthed it out. And there she is at the top of the hill, on top of Sulcum, my Audi A1, which is nicknamed the Nuke, as I've mentioned, and as everyone probably knows. I picked this car up from Watford Audi on the 1st of September and drove off the forecourt 10 minutes after midnight. So 10 minutes after legally being able to register this car, I drove it off the forecourt and then woke up at 6 a.m. to drive to Dub Customs where they blacked it out, stealthed it out, and made it the real Nuke. And my mum drives a 2004 Ford Focus. And because I've come down with my girlfriend, my mum, sister, and and nephew, not enough people could fit in that car, and plus I wanted to drive myself. So myself and my girlfriend have come down in the Audi A1, and we've actually taken the majority of the luggage. So both my suitcase, my girlfriend's suitcase, and all of the food for the week fitted in this car, which actually didn't do a good thing for the fuel economy, which I will get to in a bit. So let's start with short distance, town driving. What is this car like as a city car? 
it is designed for the nimble, tight city streets. And to begin with, starting this car up, it is incredibly quiet. The engine runs so smoothly. You don't even feel like it's actually on. A little bit like a Rolls Royce, I like to think, when I drive this car. And then the S-Tronic gearbox is an absolute dream. The Hill Assist is beautiful. It will start moving off. The steering is as light as you need it to be. The gearbox is as smooth as you ever want it to be. And that is the great thing about driving this car around the town. I absolutely love it. And this is why I pick this car to drive every single day. I've put miles on it freely and it just does everything that I want it to absolutely perfectly. The visibility is very good, even with the tints that I got from Dub Customs, which are legal because they're the rear ones and the back ones. It is basically the black edition Audi A1, which I don't think is actually available from Audi. Now, when I'm driving around town, I tend to just drive in the efficiency setting because it's the start stop. If I'm coasting, it also drops the revs right down. So my fuel efficiency actually increases is a hell of a lot which is a really really good benefit to this car this car costs about 45 pounds to fill up the fuel tank and that can get a range between 450 miles which is very very good but it can also get pretty bad as I discovered on the way down here with all the luggage in the back when this car is very heavy the little 1.4 engine does struggle a little bit now being Audi's smallest car the Audi A1 is incredibly nimble, great turning circle, and then driving these tight roads coming down into the Sulcombe Town Centre. This car is just so easy to drive. You don't feel uncomfortable. You don't feel like you're gonna clip a wing mirror, curb a wheel. This car being as small as it is, is ideal for the city. And now I've just taken my foot off the brake. I'm coasting down in efficiency mode. Look at this, it is coping with roadworks, which you get anywhere in Britain, but we're now coming into the Sulcombe High Street, which is incredibly tight and very easy to maneuver around, even with people and dogs. One of the best advantages about this specific spec is these bad boys here. The paddles, the S-Tronic gearbox on this car. I've always said Audi produce one of, if not the best gearboxes that I've driven. The S-Tronic is just superb, lightning fast, but also super smooth in this car as well. So driving around town, cruising, no need for finding a biting point with a clutch. It is just a dream, it makes this car so easy to drive. And having this car as a daily and being stuck in a lot of traffic, this is just exactly what you want in a car. Ooh, this is actually quite tight now. <laughs> Let's move on to long distance road trips because when I bought this car, I wanted to have a daily vehicle that I could use that meant that I wasn't going to be driving my Lamborghini every day because when I drove the Audi R8 as my daily, I lost that special feeling of driving it and it did just become the norm for me. So I knew that when I wanted to buy the Lamborghini, I also needed to have a daily so that when I stepped in the Lamborghini, it was gonna feel very, very special every single time. However, the one thing that I did not foresee is the amount of long distance road trips that I go on in this car. And for example, Sulcombe this week, is one of those examples 240 miles on uk roads i've also been up north quite a lot of times and this car surprisingly is absolutely incredible on motorways with crosswinds whatever the weather this car is superb i have driven the brand new smart car which feels a little bit wobbly and when you're on the motorways and going over 60 miles an hour however this car it actually has quite a good feel when you're driving on this road. It feels planted and it doesn't actually get affected too much by the weather around it. And driving at 70, 75 miles an hour, with whatever the weather, this car absolutely nails the long drives, which I really wasn't expecting from this car. I didn't test drive this car before I bought it. I just kind of hoped for the best. And the smart car was for me, a car that was fantastic around the city but pretty rubbish on the motorways. Whereas this car, it does both absolutely brilliantly. And even just driving around these lovely coastal roads, 
it really grips the road quite well. I've even got it in efficiency, but once you put it in dynamic and the car sort of spices up a little bit, I can paddle it up, go down the gears, and this car becomes a lot of fun. And I tell you what, one of my favorite journeys that I had was driving up to Lincoln, which was a lot of motorway miles, and this car handled it perfectly. The fuel economy was ridiculous. It was about 60 MPG. But then as soon as we came off the road, we came into these tight, twisty roads, and it was about 11.30 at night, so I had my headlights on. I could see all of the headlights coming towards me, and I just felt super safe on the road, and I just nailed it, and this car was so much fun. I'm like, right now, in fourth gear which probably isn't the best gear but let's put it down into third and here we go this car driving fast and driving hard on these sorts of road it is like a mini go-kart we're getting bombarded by hail <laughs> this is this is what happens when you go on a beach holiday in England I'm actually shouting. This is insane. Look at it. I open the window. Look. Oh. Oh. Look at the size of them. <laughs> oh my god. Ridiculous. Let's finally move on to the Audi drive selector that you get within the Audi A1. And this is something that I really wasn't expecting from this car because it is the base level, smallest little Audi. They still put their drive select in and both three systems, both three systems, doesn't make sense. All three systems make a huge difference to the car that I just was not expecting. So efficiency mode basically cuts the engine if you're coasting, it changes gear early, it probably uses less than the engine, meaning you get better MPG. So for the long distances, this car is perfect. And I have mentioned previously in this video that I do use it around town quite a lot. However, Coming up to a junction, coasting into a junction, which I do quite a lot, it cuts the power and has a little think about whether it wants to turn back on or not. So the only downsides that I'd say to this car is when it's in efficiency mode, driving into a junction, for example, you're cruising into a roundabout and you're looking to the right to see if any cars are coming. No cars are coming, the engine's already cut off, so you have to put your foot on the accelerator for a couple of seconds before it realizes that you want to engage the engine again. And that's when you get the power back. So there's been a few times that I've sort of been caught in limbo on a roundabout gun. Where's the power? The efficiency mode is very, very good, but I would probably stick to using it on long journeys. As soon as you flick it into dynamic, which I have been doing already, you can just feel the engine has just picked up and then you knock the gear stick into sport mode. It turns into manual and then you can have a load of fun with this car. And even with the Great British Spring, or oh, we're coming into spring anyway, with the weather being a little bit wet, the road's a little bit wet as well, this car becomes a little go-kart. And the way that, the, just the weight of this car as you're going around the corner, it's such a fun little thing. And I think the best way to summarize what this car is like to drive it's a safe, small, nimble and fast city car that looks fantastic. You get all of the features that you want from a car that costs 20,000 pounds. And I think Audi have nailed it. I think the new facelift on the A1 with the taillights and the headlights make this car really, really futuristic, up to date. The old A1 still looks fantastic and you've got the LED lights. This car is a serious, serious daily. And I know that there's Tim out there with a Ferrari FF as a daily with a engine bigger than the whole size of this car. But for what I wanted, this is absolutely perfect. Basically to round this video off, I might as well say that the second video that is gonna be coming from my family trip in Sulcombe is a Q&A 
about daily drivers. So if you've got a question about this car, if you've got a question about whether I'm gonna upgrade this car or what would be my perfect daily to sit alongside whatever the Lamborghini replacement is, then please let me know in the comment box below. I look forward to reading all of your comments and answering your questions in the next video, which is gonna be a lot of fun. I'm basically just gonna go for a drive. I think I'm gonna vlog the drive back to Watford. And within that drive and the vlog, I'm gonna be answering some of your questions or some of your most asked questions about daily driving. But for now, I'm gonna continue enjoying this lovely weather that we're currently experiencing in Selkham. It's just heavy showers all day with a little bit of sunshine here and there. So I've had a lot of fun actually driving this car and featuring it on my YouTube channel. If you wanna see more of the Audi A1 as well, please comment below. Or if you've got any more questions, then I look forward to answering them in the Q&A. And I kind of have got to keep my eyes on the road because this road is actually quite tight. But thank you for watching. Thumbs up if you've enjoyed this video. And if you love the Nuke, if you're thinking about the A1, just give it a thumbs up. And subscribe if you haven't already. I don't really know what I'm talking about right now. I'm concentrating so much on driving that I think I'll just cut this video there. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you soon. Cheers.